and be inspired by the fullness of blackness. Welcome back to Amplified. Tonight, I want to highlight the ground game and how partnering with grassroots organizations is a powerful strategy to drive systemic change for education, policing, voting rights, pretty much everything. Founded in 1999, the Advancement Project is a racial justice organization working on projects ranging from voter protection to disrupting the school to prison pipeline. Over the past couple of years, they've done research on voting rights that's become a part of the congressional record to support the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Now, that's what I call having receipts. This research is crucial in order to fight Republicans' push to limit voting rights for black and brown people, especially after the Supreme Court's decision to remand a constitutional challenge to Arizona voting laws that banned third-party ballot collection and invalidated ballots cast in the wrong precinct. Joining me to discuss is civil rights lawyer Judith Brown Dianis. She is the executive director of Advancement Project. Good evening and thank you so much for being here on Amplified. Thank you for having Judy. me. It's so good to see you. You are doing the most. You have a number of big picture items that you're working on from educational equity to race counts mm -hmm. program. And I'm just so interested in, you know, one, tell us just a little bit about your racial justice work, especially how as a national organization, you're really trying to work with grassroots organizations to mobilize around these issues. Sure. Well, Advancement Project is really grounded in the idea that we have to build power in communities of color in order to end structural racism. We were started because we knew that there was a point in time, and we're in this moment again, where the courts were moving to the right, and we were losing a lot of our civil rights gains. And in fact, not only losing, but they were rolling back the gains and rolling back the hands of time. And so we knew we had to get back to what was right about the civil rights movement, was that organizing was centered. And that what we would do as lawyers would be to support the efforts on the ground. And so that's what we do across the country. We are helping grassroots folks hold systems accountable, hold election officials accountable, and then we also work at the national level to push Congress to do the right thing so that our communities can thrive. The bottom up and the top down approach all work so well, you know, consistently together. And I came to learn that, honestly, I got to do a little work alongside of Advancement uh, Project several years ago when I was at the Center for American Progress as a senior fellow. I was doing work around school to prison pipeline. And that's when mm -hmm. I really got to connected to the work that you all were doing to try to dismantle school to prison pipeline. We were looking um, especially at black girls who were being uh, thrown in jails and coming into contact with the system at disproportionate rates as well as, as the queer kids and what really struck me about your organization's approach is that I remember that you are so connected to the ground and stories about real people's lives that are impacted by policy which is something that when you're in like a Washington think tank like I was it's a little bit harder to really feel and to right. touch and so you know just share with us just kind of your experience um, doing the work that you do to get to the White House and get those conversations to permeate on Capitol Hill but doing it in a way that you're able to bring real people's lived experience from communities into a bigger conversation. I'm, I'm interested in how that kind of looks and feels for you and what some of the successes are. Sure. Well, I mean, it's, it is that working on the ground, right, is about engaging people in their own destiny, right, and thinking about the mm. systems that they want that will work for them. So if it's school to prison pipeline, we actually work with like teenagers across the country and we have been successful not only in decreasing suspensions of black students in many school districts, but also now we have a police free schools movement. And we're working with, again, organizations throughout the country. And the way that this has worked, Aisha, is that, you know, as we do this work, we start to bring these groups together and then to push on the federal level. So our work on the school to prison pipeline actually ended up going to the White House when President Obama was there and he and the mm. Attorney General Holder put in place and Arne Duncan put in place 
guidance on discrimination in uh, school discipline. If we look at other issues, for example, we worked on policing issues, and we were working with the protesters after Ferguson, protesters who were uh, in Florida and other places, and we were supporting them in pushing for change on the ground. And what happened as a result was the same kind of thing, that President Obama wanted to have a meeting with the protesters uh, after Eric Garner was killed and after Mike Brown were killed, mm -hmm. and we arranged a meeting for President Obama with the protesters. But that, again, is because wow. folks on the ground are stepping into their power, and then we're helping them connect the dots to the federal level. Mm, that's all this is about, stepping into our power. And we don't even always win, but the opportunities mm -hmm. to do that, you know, are endless, right? And that's one of the things right. um, that I want people who are watching Amplified to know and connect with. I started off with your introdu in introduction, Judy, reminding people, too, that you are a civil rights attorney, um, I guess, by mm -hmm. training, right? And, mm -hmm. and that some of the work that you're doing at Advancement Project also is about filing lawsuits against really that's horrific right. laws. So tell us about the lawsuit that you filed to block Georgia voting law with the, the, the strict new voter ID requirements, limiting drop boxes, mm -hmm. and the thing that is most to me nefarious is, is, is giving power essentially over mm -hmm. the elections to the state legislature, which is its own hot mess. But yeah, what are you right, guys doing around right. that? Yeah, so again, I mean, we are connected to folks on the ground. So we don't just come in and file litigation, but we're working with people who want change and who are going to push for change beyond the litigation. So we filed a case in Georgia against SB 202, and we represent black churches um, who have been pushing their congregations to go out and vote and who are on the front lines trying to make sure that communities have all the information they need to go vote. And so we represent them. And we're challenging every part of that law. The same in Florida. Mm. We have a lawsuit against the bill there. And so that litigation is going to go forward. But at the same time, what we're doing is we're engaging those congregations so that people understand not only the laws that were passed, but what's at stake, so that when the legislatures come back into session, that we're going to fight back, and we're going to fight back with everybody uh, with an all-hands-on-deck moment, right? And so litigation is still important, but it has to be combined with grassroots power so that we can really mm. make the change that we need to have. Mm. I appreciate the, the kind of breadth and depth of the issues that you all are working on, too, because racial justice